the things that it teaches are remarkable for being just a simple, fun game. And you don't even need to know what you're learning to learn it, right. which is super cool. So as you're guessing what emotion people are trying to portray, you are expanding your emotional vocabulary. Welcome to the Crossing It Off podcast, where we believe living with intention through a bucket list lifestyle is a great way to bring yourself personal joy. As you are crossing items off your list, you're actually filling up your bucket. The more items you cross off, the more joy gets added, until eventually your joy spills over into the lives of those around you. My name is Roger Williams, and as the host of this show, I will be interviewing guests, people just like you, that are crossing items off their own bucket list. My hope is that by hearing these stories, you will be inspired and empowered to cross items off your own bucket list. When you find something impactful for your journey, we invite you to share the episode with one other person and leave an honest rating or review of the show. This is an amazing way for you to gift those feelings of inspiration and joy to others. Now let's start crossing it off together. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Crossing Off Podcast. I am super excited, as usual, for my guests. I love talking to people that um, do things on their list that help others, and our guest has definitely done that. Plus, this has kind of been on my list, too, so uh, in a little different way. Uh, Melissa Price is our guest today. She describes herself as creative, a kid whisperer, a lifelong learner, and an educator. Melissa, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Roger. Yeah. So Melissa, tell our audience what you crossed off your list. I invented a card game. Nice. Okay. This is on my list. So we're going to have a good conversation. So before we get to like what the game is and the mechanics, kind of walk through your origin story for us. Like what led you to wanting to cross this off a list? Great question. (laughs) When I was younger, I lived in a home that was abusive and I learned after my parents split up and I was no longer um, a scared little kid who couldn't like share my emotions. I learned I had emotions (laughs) and Mm. I didn't know what to do with them. So I realized that I had a lot of anger inside, but nobody really taught me that that anger was because I had had a lot of um, boundaries crossed when I was younger, Mm. physically and mentally and all kinds of ways. And so, um, I just thought I was an angry person all of a sudden and I hated it. Mm. I just, I thought it was a bad part of me. And, um, when I got angry, I would kind of explode. And then I would like do things that hurt myself because I didn't want to hurt other people because I had seen what that does, you know, in my own home. And, um, so I just kind of grew up with a temper. I don't think it was like extraordinarily terrible, but it, I just wasn't comfortable with it. And as I grew up and got ready to have my own family and my own kids, I knew I wasn't going to pass on the abuse, Mm -hmm. but I knew I didn't want to, um, like explode in these angry fits either. Right. Yeah. Because the person, the person receiving that doesn't really understand that it's not them. It's It's not about them. Right. 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 So I um, started just doing some therapy. I read a lot of books at that time. I watched a lot of Oprah (laughs) (laughs) because I love to learn. I've just continued to educate myself about my emotions, about what I can do with them. What's their purpose. And I've just done a lot of healing work for a couple of decades actually, but really in the last 10 years, it's like grown exponentially just my knowledge. And so I also have homeschooled my kids all of their lives and I've homeschooled other people's kids, like taught classes and these kids will talk to me and they will tell me they're struggling with addictions. They're struggling with their emotions. And they have very active family members who are doing the best to raise them. And yet they're still struggling, you know, and then you can look and see like all of the uh, suicide attempts going on in our schools and just not, not even just in our schools, but just it's Mm -hmm. this plague that I want to stop. I, I've known that I'm somehow going to help youth, but I just really didn't know how. And uh, I got asked 
about three years ago to talk to a, a mom's group about how to help their kids manage emotions. And I love youth, but I haven't um, really thought about tools for really young kids. And all these moms were very young. So I was really like trying to think, how can I present to them that's different than the older kids that will, will be helpful. So I started reading these articles about the Inuit Indians. Okay. Super cool. <laughs> Just like some Facebook articles started popping up and I would read them, but they have very um, few mental health problems compared to hmm. us. And so I thought that was interesting. So I started reading and this lady lived with them for a while and she recognized that when she would lose her temper, or become frustrated, the family she was living with would think she was acting like a little child. Like mm. it just wasn't in their realm of experience that kids would grow up continuing with, with their emotional outbursts. And so <clears throat> she learned a couple of things and this is really like summarizing. What mm -hmm. I learned. Sure. I bet. But one, one thing that they would do is they would tell stories <clears throat> mm. that to me seem like whoppers. Like, <laughs> Um, I think she explains like they would tell their children, don't go out by the ocean because like a sea monster will come out and will grab you and take you and you'll never see your parents again. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, that's a fun way to teach, I guess. And then the other thing that I was um, really interested in is they'll play act with their kids. So I think she describes like giving a two-year-old a rock and telling them to throw it at you. And then you just kind of overact and just be like, Oh, that really hurt mommy. Did you mean to hurt me? You know, and just getting their little gears going on their own. Right. And so I read a couple articles and I was like, okay, so how can I bring play into teaching kids how to manage their emotions? And we are a game playing family. Like that's nice. something that we've done as we've grown up is we enjoy playing games together. And so I was just pondering it one day and this idea for this card game came and I put it together in like three hours, I was done. Then I went to this group, I talked to them and I said, kind of created a card game. How long would you play a card game with your kids? And they're like, no more than 20 minutes. <laughs> like that's all we can stand, you know? And so I was like, okay, um, maybe I'll, I'll bring it by you guys and, and you can try it. And I, I took it to the one mom who said only 20 minutes tops. And um, we played it for an hour and we only stopped because the kids had to go to, to bed and they were like five and seven years old. So wow. these were pretty young kids and they loved it. So what is your main objective for having the kids play the game? What's the, what's the purpose and the outcome that you're hoping for once they've played it for 20 minutes or an hour? What's the, <laughs> what's the outcome? Well, the outcome and this, I found this out later, like all ages love the game. Mm. I play it with adults. I play it at business retreats. I play it with all ages of kids, young adults. It's amazing. I didn't expect that, but there's a couple of things that I had intended. And then a couple of things that I realized later it teaches. And I was like, wow, I'm not that smart. <laughs> you know? um, but one of the things that, well, if I, if I show it to you real quick, it'll make sense as I tell you what it's. Okay. Can I, I, I do that? Yeah. I may describe, okay. I may describe stuff to the audience if, if I need yes. to, but you keep going. Yeah. Okay. So we've got an action card, which is an orange card and an emotion card, which is a green card. And you just do the action and the emotion. Super simple. So for example, the card that I'm holding up says, show the emotion by playing the air piano. Okay. And then the emotion is relaxed. Hmm. So if you can imagine, you're just play acting, playing a piano, very chill, and other people have to watch you and guess what emotion you're portraying. Okay. So another one is make the sound of an owl who's lonely. So how would you make a lonely sounding owl? How would I? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, I, don't know. <laughs> I know it makes you think, right? So <clears throat> there are, you know, lots of different kinds of actions. Um, sometimes there's like show it with just your face or just your walk. Um, there's a little bit of singing in there. The things that it teaches are remarkable for being just a simple, fun game. And you don't even need to know what you're learning to learn it, right. which is super cool. So as you're guessing what emotion people are trying to portray, you are expanding your emotional vocabulary. Let's say you're making your owl sound and I'm like sad or relaxed or chill. You would probably say, yeah, you're close on the sad, not so close on the chill. I'd keep guessing or whoever is playing is will keep guessing. So we're throwing out all of these synonyms mm. and that's expanding our emotional vocabulary. And scientists have told us that most adults use eight to 10 words to describe how we feel. So we're angry, we're sad, we're frustrated, whatever. And <clears throat> we're doing a disservice modeling that for our kids, because if any of us can pinpoint exactly how we feel, we'll be able to get the right message from that emotion and move forward more quickly. Here at the Crossing It Off podcast, we are passionate about inspiring you in your bucket list lifestyle and empowering you to live out your list. We offer many resources to assist you in your bucket list journey, such as web resources in the show notes, bucket list mentoring services, my book, Live Out Your Lists, a private Facebook group for you to share your bucket list success stories with others, and more. All of these can be found at crossingitoffpodcast.com. Find the resource that fits your need so that you can live out your list. Now back to the show. So for instance, like if you have a kid who um, has a brother with an ice cream cone and they don't have one, they might think, man, I'm just, I'm mad. It's not fair. Right. Well, no boundaries have been crossed. Right. But you're really actually probably more jealous. You right. want something that they have. So if you know that and you know what jealousy means, then the message is go get what it is you're wanting. If that's legal, ethical, moral or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yes. And so they're better able to go, oh, I need to provide myself something. I need to go get a dessert or ask mom or whatever it is. So, so, so when I ask my children or my partner to, to use more words, it's kind of the, that's what I'm trying to get at is the use more words. Cause that, right yes. now it's not, I'm not sure we're, we're speaking the same language even at sometimes. Yeah. That's so true. That's so true. So that can help us with our communication. Like you're talking about, um, it just helps us to, to get the right message from our emotion, um, and to be able to name it, we got to be able to name it, to tame it. Right. Another thing as we're playing, we start to tune into body language and to tone of voice. Um, some of us are very good and natural at getting cues from body language and tone of voice. Some people are not, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. We all have different like gifts and talents and what we've learned. Right. But it can be helpful for us to realize, you know, that person's anger is like really seething and quiet. This person's anger is really out there, you know, and how is it different from mine? Mm -hmm. Because usually we see other people kind of how we see ourselves and so we may not know that our loved one or our friend is angry because they keep it bottled up, but maybe they tense their jaw. Maybe they clench their fists instead of like outright show it with their voice or something. So it helps us to get practice, you know, tuning into those things, but it also really helps you to realize, oh, I should not think that I know how they're feeling. Yeah. I can see how this is be beneficial for seven to 70 year olds. I understand yes. that, you know, that it's not, not just a child's game. Melissa, what are some of the other things the game can teach us if we play it? It gives us a chance to walk through emotional regulation, at least the first few steps. So we pick a card and we accept this emotion. It's not a positive or a negative emotion. And we allow ourselves to act it out through the talking, through the singing, through the movement, 
that's involved. And that gets that energy out of our body, which are, we need to do with our emotions. If we don't move our sadness out through crying or through breathing or talking to a friend, that emotion gets stuck and trapped and it just causes pain in our body. And it, that's the kind of thing that explodes after a while if we don't let it out. Yeah. And you're doing learning it in a creative way too, right? You're having to use, not just learning it creatively, but you're having to use creativity from yourself, rely on yourself for that creativity to play the game. I think that's, uh, that's beneficial. I did really love the fact that as you play it, you're having fun. Laughter is the best medicine, right? But you're creating the safe space to share your emotions. Mm-hmm. And you get the opportunity, if you choose to, to start some really fabulous conversations over emotions. Um, I played this game with a bunch of young adults on the first day of 2020. And after we had played for a while, um, we got to my um, all play card. The all play card just asks you to think about where you feel that emotion in your body and then you share it with people. Mm. So we did that. And after we did that, one of these kids, I call them, but they're like 21 year olds. They were like, so what emotion do you hate and why? And every single young adult shared that. Wow. That was mind blowing. Yeah. Positive, positive community building without even yes. trying. And that's, mm-hmm. that's amazing. Yep. So I love that. Now, as, as someone plays a lot of board games, I, I have to ask the question, like, is there an objective besides the learning piece? Is there an objective for the people playing the games? Like, does somebody win? Does, you know, I mean, because I, I'm just curious from the fact is that could be counterproductive to what you're trying to do. So how do you address that when you develop the game? Like that's, you are exactly correct. It is totally counterproductive to have points. <laughs> Um, when I came up with it, I was thinking about that and I've had maybe two people out of all the hundreds of people that I've played with ask, and usually before we play the game, (laughs) how how long do we play or what do we play to? And there's no points because you can't out emote me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's totally counterproductive. Right. Right, Exactly. (laughs) And I've never, most people don't even ask. Mm -hmm. It's really funny. Like we just play until we know we're done and it happens every single game. Sometimes I've played with people for half an hour. Sometimes people will play for two hours like adults and we just go until we're just all like, Ooh, I think we're done. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> so it's really, I, I put a point system in it just because one person was like, well, I like to win. I want points. And I'm like, okay, how can I make this point? So I tried to figure out like a very simple, like point system and I put it in. Nobody ever played it with points, right, yeah. never played it with points and nobody cared. Right. So it's amazing to me. I'm, I grew up in a family where Monopoly was a vicious activity. Um, and uh, I learned from that, that I didn't have to win which was good. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I am very competitive at the game of risk um, just because I, I want my strategy to work, but every other game I play, I'm just like, eh, we're just having fun. So it's yeah. nice, nice to hear that that wasn't necessarily a, a thought process in your mind. Um, so I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Let's, let's switch a little bit. Okay. So you come up with this game mm-hmm. and I'm very interested in the d- delivery to the customer type stuff like how did you like get it manufactured like what was that process for you to like have this idea and they okay how do how do i get cards made how do i sell this you know walk us through what you did to like do that portion of it well i had very um good friends who kind of pushed me forward (laughs) because after i created this i just had printed it on my computer and i would take it around and play it and realize oh, this is a legit thing. (laughs) Like this is super helpful. And I realized there were things that it taught that I hadn't even planned on. And so anyway, I I showed a friend, I went to a retreat, like a writer's retreat Mm -hmm. and we played my game. And on the way home, she was like, you need to do something with this. (laughs) And so um, probably about a month later, we were talking and she said, Next Wednesday, which was in like four days, you're going to get your games printed up 
and you're going to bring it to my house. You're going to invite your friends and we're going to see what happens. And I will buy your first 10 games. You don't have to deliver them to me now, but that will cover your printing costs. So I took it to a local print shop and had them print it and got it in my little hands on the way up to her house. I had just picked up my mom from the airport because she was visiting and she is not, she's, um, she's not gregarious. Like she's Mm. very shy and took her to this house of people she didn't know and said, we're going to play my game. (laughs) And so I had about 15 people there from just different walks of life, former students and just all kinds of people. And I went there with my freshly printed game and we played for about an hour. And, um, one of the people that showed up, I like how she summed it up. She said, I came a little late. I could watch the game in 30 seconds and figure out how it was played. And then by the end, I feel bonded to everybody here. Wow. Because it brings this connection when you play and you're up in front of somebody and you're sharing your emotion, even though this Mm -hmm. is just a game, it brings out this chance to be a little bit vulnerable with your emotions and people can really see you. And it Mm. just brings this connection that is phenomenal. So I, I can start out with a room full of strangers like this. And by the time we're over, people feel comfortable talking to them, getting to know them. Like it's, it's amazing. And just because you've laughed and yeah. done this game, right? Yeah. And so, so that was the first few games that I, that I purchased was through her donation. And I just started talking to people and playing the game with people and selling it that way. Um, everybody that, that went that night bought a game. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that's <laughs> cool. Um, and she had set the price. So I had, I had been asking moms along the way, like, what would you pay? And they're like, I would pay no more than this or this for like a card game. And I had no idea what to ask. And this lady was like, I'm paying you this much for this 10 games. And so I just started charging that. And I've had very few people not want to pay it. I still get it printed at that local print shop. Wow. I'm me, myself, and I. Yeah, no, I, I know. But <laughs> we'll talk later. There's some, there's some places on the internet where you can get printing boxes, everything pretty cheap. So we'll have a talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds great. I just, I just haven't. Um, so like, if I can talk to somebody, if I can tell them what it's teaching, like so easy to sell, so easy yeah, to sell. I, I don't know how to replicate that online. Mm. I haven't figured that out yet. So I've, I'm working on that. Um, I, I wasn't planning on starting a business when I came up with this game. I imagine. I imagine. So, <laughs> yeah. So what is the one thing you've like learned about yourself in this process? What what mm. what do you take away from this experience? You know, that you have this great friend that, you know, kind of pushes you over the edge a little bit to go do something. What <laughs> but what right. what for you? What do you walk away at the end of the day now that this is rolling? What does it mean for you? Well, I've spent the last couple of years. Um, doing my best as I've made money to reinvest in teaching myself business stuff. Mm. And the biggest thing I've learned and I'm still learning is there are so many good ways and right ways to do things, including running a business. And when I look at all these people and what their special sauce is, and it's overwhelming it's overwhelming to pick. So which should I do? Should I go this route or this route or this route? Hundreds of different routes. And it can make you, um, it can like just stop you because of the overwhelm on how many choices that you have and which one's right for you. So I think really learning to tune into what works for me, even though I don't know if it will work, <laughs> like mm-hmm. just settle on and listen to me that's been a hard road for me because I'm the type of person I want to learn from everybody. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. (laughs) I want to just, you know, (laughs) and I, I need to uh, invent my own wheel (laughs) taking advice, but really weighing it and measuring it because I have started so many different ways to market. And I don't know always the right ways to market and things like that, especially when I'm, I'm bootstrapping everything at this point. Yeah, I, so I, um, I feel that for myself. <laughs> I <can> understand. <laughs> yep. So, um, so yeah, I'm getting a little more settled into like listening to what's right for me and not 
trying all the things all at once. Melissa, what would you say is the next thing you want to cross off your list? Oh, wow. Um, I want to travel and speak to people. I, the whole reason I do this is because I've seen what addiction Mm. can do to a person and to their family. And I've lived it and it's painful. It's hard. Um, especially for the person with an addiction and we all have our little addictions, things we turn to when we don't know what to do with our emotions that are uncomfortable and we don't want to be in them. So we get those emotions stuck because we don't know how to let them out. And we turn to something that maybe is just a bad habit, but can become an addiction. And then we start feeling guilt and shame and it affects who we are and our brilliant gift to the world that we can be because we're hiding and it just closes off relationships. And I I don't want that for any of the kids out there. I don't want it for any of my loved ones. Right. And so that's why I'm very passionate about like, let's understand our emotions. Let's understand what to do with them to get them out. So we can engage our brains and figure out what's the next step, but get them out of your bodies, get that energy out first. So I, I want, I want our youth, especially to grow up knowing what to do because they're imploding and exploding because they don't know what to do. Yeah, they weren't taught by their parents. We weren't taught by our parents. Their parents that's for sure. Taught. So I want to write that manual. I just want to get out yeah. there and, that's awesome so speaking of that how can folks find you online how can they how can currently where could i go get this this game if i wanted to you know stop listening to this podcast and and pick it up (laughs) it's um at emotioncommotiongame.com okay awesome melissa thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for for um, being creative and coming up with this idea um, emotional iq is is definitely a, a thing that we all should be working on constantly and uh, i appreciate your work and uh, with all ages and i wish you the most success with your game thank you so much roger